There are seemingly endless obstacles between us and actually addressing the climate crisis. And I wanna focus on one today that you might not be that familiar with. It's used by oil and gas investors to make it more costly and possibly stop climate based legislation that would stop the climate crisis or at least fight against it from going forward. These are investor state dispute settlements and they might sound technical, they are, but they're important and so we're gonna push through. So basically what happens is fossil fuel investors go to private international tribunals to argue that climate change policies illegally cut into their profits and that they thus must be compensated for that profit cut. And now governments are scrambling to figure out how to not get sued for billions when enacting climate policies. And so think about that, if they can sue governments that change the law for large quantities of money as we will describe, then there's a couple of different ways that that can stop these bills from going forward. One, it might cause them to backtrack to avoid further lawsuits. Once enough of these lawsuits go forward though, it might actually stop them from ever doing it in the first place. If they start to feel like regulating carbon emissions, chain, like literally outlawing certain types of mining or energy production inside of countries, they might not do it in the first place. And that's kind of the point here. And so effectively these ISDS provisions, the investor state dispute settlements, allow foreign companies to buy, bypass the actual judicial system of specific states and go effectively to a court of last resort. If they win in this environment, there's no appeal process for that, that's it. And huge quantities of money can go out the door with no option for appeal. They've been successful with this in the past. And by the way, these sorts of dispute settlements don't exist only for fossil fuel companies, but they make up a very large percentage of them. 20% are just from this industry out of all of them. And you can see that fossil fuel arbitration specifically are most often related to oil and gas, 92% of the time. American investors, by the way, as a fun little note, make up 30% of all of these around the globe. So we're basically number one there too, and it can amount to a lot of money. The average amount awarded in fossil fuel cases of this sort is over $600 million. That is five times the amount awarded in non fossil fuel cases. And we can jump into a couple of examples how this has led to a weakening of environmental regulations. You can already see that this is an environment that they can choose, they can stack the deck, effectively choosing their own juries and judges. There's no way to appeal. And for some companies or some countries that aren't as rich as the United States, these settlements can be absolutely backbreaking. Yeah, so I'm gonna explain that as well. But first of all, guys, this is exactly what corporate rule looks like. The In these trade deals, what they say is that corporations can sue actual governments like the US government and take money from us if we try to protect our own citizens. They say, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You're cutting into my profits by protecting your citizens. You're not allowed to do that. You're not in charge, America, we're in charge. And that is very true. So I'm gonna give you examples from other countries as well. But and here the right wing is not as hypocritical. That's a rare situation. But some in the right wing are also saying, wait a minute, this is a violation of our sovereignty, isn't it? So we don't have a choice. If a company says I didn't make enough money off of your citizens, uh, give me money, we have to give it to them? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And wait till you find out who the arbitrators are. So I'll give you examples of how they've done this to uh, different countries. They've also done it to us. But in Pakistan, Pakistan, which is way, way poorer than us, had to pay $5.8 billion because they were trying to crack down on a company that was, in their opinion, doing corruption, kickbacks, bribes. I don't know who's right or wrong in that case, but Pakistan was trying to end corruption. So they had to pay $5.8 billion to a company they thought was corrupt. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. So wait, wait, who's deciding the case? Was it somebody in Pakistan? No, Pakistan is not allowed to decide that case. No, it was an international arbitrator. Who are the arbitrators? Well, funny enough, they're corporate lawyers. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they work for the same corporations. Maybe not directly, hey, that corporation then hires him before or after that particular case. But generally they work for corporations and they're of that mindset. So it's not the number that John read you is not an accident. The companies win an astounding 72% of the time. Because mm -hmm. the arbitrators are stacked with people who already agree with them. So they're like, how dare you try to stop corruption, Pakistan? Give me $5.8 billion you definitely don't have to spare that you could have given 
to your citizens instead. Yeah. But wait till you get a little other cases, Uruguay. And John Oliver even did a story about this on HBO. They said, "Oh, warning on the cigarette packages, just like we have. And the cigarette companies were like, how dare you? No, that cuts into our profits. If people know that this causes cancer, they won't buy it. I mean, that's absurd, right? They sued. They went to the arbitration. Mm -hmm. And guys, remember, when they lose, on average, remember the John and the number John read you? On average, not total, on average, they win over $600 million in each case. Mm -hmm. But even if you don't lose the hundreds of millions of dollars, you gotta spend millions and millions on the lawyers. And then that drags out forever and ever. And the most important part is, then the next time you're trying to pass a law, you're like, oh, damn it, do I wanna deal with these guys? It's gonna cost me anywhere from like 20 million to 600 million and sometimes $6 billion. Yeah. So a lot of times they don't even pass laws to protect their own citizens because we all, the whole world lives under corporate rule. I'm gonna give you one last example and then hand it back to John. So in Egypt, they try to pass an increase in the minimum wage. Corporations sued them saying, how dare you? That would increase my costs. I would demand to pay your citizens less. If you make me pay them more, a fair wage, you owe me money. You owe me hundreds of millions of dollars. That's insane. So our citizens all across the world have to pay, have to be paid the lowest possible rate. Otherwise, we're gonna get sued by the people who actually run the world, these corporate executives. Mm -hmm. Guys, the machines have taken over. So it's not in like in the movies where the machines are robots. The machines are legal fictions that we humans created called corporations. Yeah. And they now literally rule us and say that we're not allowed to protect our kids, our own citizens, and we're not even allowed to have high wages. If we dare to have, forget high wages, like just living wages. If we dare to do it, whether it's Egypt or America, there's gonna be a price to pay. We have to pay them for their loss of profits, which they are, why are they guaranteed profits? How is this capitalism? That's the invisible hand of the, wait. <sighs> That doesn't, that's not how that works. Yeah, uh, if you're a reasonable person that isn't being paid millions of dollars to uh, be a part of the system, your mind just whirls at the possibilities of this. Like, so if a state put out a dietary guidance that encouraged people to eat less carbs and I own a bakery, can I sue them? If they pull out of a war and I sell weapons, can I sue them because now I can't in the future sell them weapons? Like if you can sue them for raising the minimum wage, which costs the corporation money, well, uh, our government has uh, sat and done nothing and the wage hasn't gone up. So can the workers sue the US government? Yeah, why don't we let the workers I sue mean, the government? We should probably form yeah. a corporation, honestly. None of this makes any sense. This is what democracy is for. If the corporations didn't want the people of Egypt to raise the wage, engage in politics, convince them of why that would be a bad thing. But this is like the socialization that we talked about after the economic collapse. It's like they generally win in the system anyway, but if the, if the, the will of the people ever turns against them, they still win, just not inside of the system. They just sue the system. It's an amazing system that they've got. Now look, we started off talking about the environment. This is relevant here. Back in 2017, France's environmental minister drafted this law with the goal being that they were gonna end fossil fuel extraction by 2040. So in response, a Canadian oil and gas company threatened to sue them using one of these ISDSs. In the end, they watered it down, but it's not even a French, it's not a French company, but a French company was like, okay, in theory, we've crunched the numbers. This could hurt us at some point. So decades from now, the French can't stop this from happening. That's how insane this is. Now, we, this is an example just for one Canadian company versus uh, the French. Let's let's jump ahead to. So what if we ever try to actually deal with climate change? So there are these estimates of how much it would actually cost. Uh, the IEAA had these recommendations for going to net zero. Uh, to do that, the nations could potentially be on the legal hook for 60 to 234 billion dollars. And so th that's a high enough number. That's you know, enough to potentially influence many of these states to not wanna get involved in this. But um, the ultimate cost to taxpayers, if you were to do this, there's a report in January of 2020 that found that if uh, the ISDS mechanism was used across all of this, and was used to protect fossil fuels until just halfway through the century, states could end up paying out north of $1 trillion over this. 
They don't have to convince people to support or prop up their industries. They don't even have to buy politicians to stop these legislation from happening. I mean, they're gonna do that too. They have multiple levels of defense. Just if the people ever decide that we should do something, and if they ever get elected representatives who will do something, the companies still win. They're guaranteed profits. Why? No reason, no reason that they can explain to us. There's no philosophical reason why Circuit City shut down. They really should have sued the US government. Weren't they guaranteed profits? Howard Johnson's used to be a huge chain across all of America. They really should have sued the US government because they should be guaranteed profits in the same way that these companies are. Um, how about the cost of climate change? So when uh, New Orleans get, gets devastated by a hurricane, do we can we then go to uh, Exxon Mobil and these companies go now you owe us money I have to fix all of New Orleans because you created climate change and climate change destroyed New Orleans that cut the profits of New Orleans businesses by the way the other businesses should sue their ass right but Guaranteed they, but, profits but they can't sue the companies they could only sue the citizens <laughs> through the governments because we live for our new masters corporations it's just these are facts so no, we don't get to take, they can pile on all their costs to us. But if they don't get a guaranteed profit, they're gonna sue us and say, not only should you take care of our costs, but you should give us profits on top. Yep. Now, last thing is, who are the bad guys here? The good guys, in this case, the two biggest fighters against this are Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. But, but also the populist right wing are in favor of or against this concept and are in favor of American sovereignty and protecting our citizens. The people that are guilty are the ones that the media tell you are the beloved moderates. They're not at all moderate, they're corporate. Corporate Democrats and corporate Republicans in the middle, the so-called beloved centrists that the establishment media loves so much. Those are the crooks. Those crooks get money from all those oil companies, gas companies, etc. And then when they're doing trade deals, they're like, oh, why don't we put in a provision that guarantees them profits and they could sue our own citizens and get any money they like. And it'll also scare us from doing taking any action against any of these corporations. The people that brought you that are moderate Republicans and moderate Democrats. So that's the reality and that's what you don't see in the rest of the media because they're also corporate media. Oh No, now they could sue us. We're cutting their profits. <laughs> or they could sue America, they could sue you guys. They're like, you allowed the Young Turks to tell the truth about how we rig all the laws in our favor. Yep. Okay, then that cut into our profits. So we were doing a great job of bribing Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi, and you guys outed us. No, that's it, we want money. Sorry, American citizens, since we have to serve our new corporate masters, mm -hmm. we cost you money by telling you the truth. Now, this is insane. We're supposed to live in a democracy. Instead, we all have to bow our heads to this in corporate rule. That's why we need a rebellion. Do not listen to the mainstream media and do not listen to establishment Democrats or Republicans. They're not on your side.